So Paul Salmon here. The other morning we had a uh, <clears throat> Raven 2 that came in for a 100 hour and we had pulled the aircraft into the hangar, started on the 100 hour, pulled the panels off and that sort of thing and uh, completed the 100 hour. During that 100 hour uh, we had actually replaced, uh, you know, you do an oil change and oil filter gets replaced. And the next morning when I came in, I noticed that there was a, quite a large little puddle of oil, the brand new clean oil because the engine hadn't run yet. Uh, we just put it into the engine crankcase and we noticed this puddle of oil that was sitting in the, in the floor. So I'm going to uh, let you guys take a look at that and let's see if you can figure out why you would have that oil in the floor. So let me give you, let's take a look at it and uh, I'll come back and explain what was the cause of that oil leak. Okay, so it wasn't oil that was spilled while we were putting the oil back in the crankcase. That wasn't it. And believe it or not, it's actually the engine-driven fuel pump needs to be replaced. So it's kind of, you look at that and think, engine-driven oil pump. So let me, for a much better explanation for exactly how this occurs, I'm going to refer to uh, a little uh, video clip here that Dean did for a little short explanation and we'll look at how the engine driven fuel pump actually fits onto the engine and how it's actually driven and um, give you some more insight into that. So this pool of oil here is um, coming from the engine driven fuel pump. So with the cowlings on you're probably not going to be able to see it too well but underneath the aircraft if you look up and see the little uh, sump drain it has a T on it and it, so it drains the sump from fuel if it's over primed but it also has a tube that runs up to the back of the engine driven fuel pump and if the diaphragm fails on the fuel pump then it drains the oil out that hole or out that same tube okay so this is the R44 this is the uh it's actually the back of the engine itself, but it's towards the front of the helicopter. The engine in R44 is actually mounted backwards, but this video is showing the engine driven fuel pump and we'll look more closely exactly how that gets mounted to the engine and what drives it uh, here in just a second. So an R44 Raven 2 is fuel injected. So it has two pumps. It has both a engine driven fuel pump and it also has an electric boost pump. And I'll show you the location of the electric boost pump is actually here on the firewall. So you can see here's your boost pump. That's the electric boost pump. That actually is engaged when uh, when you engage the clutch, that turns on the electric boost pump. And uh, Robinson did that so that you wouldn't forget to turn on your boost pump. Uh, you know, in airplanes, it's usually a separate switch. You have an engine driven fuel pump and then you have a boost pump switch you have to turn on. But this way, if it comes on automatically and you, uh, you know, you don't you have to worry about forgetting to turn it on because when the clutch is engaged, the electric boost pump comes on. Now, interestingly enough, on that note, there is, and I'll show you in here, there's an aux fuel pump light. It's a little bit older Raven 2, but when you disengage the clutch, when the engine is running, that aux fuel pump light will light up. The fuel pressure goes down and that light illuminates. And a lot of people, when they have a brand, when they order a brand new helicopter and they've trained in a Raven 1 and then they start flying a Raven 2, they might not notice that until they get the thing home and they dis uh, disengage the clutch and the aux fuel pump light comes on and they automatically think they've got a fuel pump failure, but that's normal. That's uh, when you engage the clutch, it energizes the aux fuel pump and when you disengage the clutch, it uh, shuts it down. That's normal. Okay, so the fuel pump attaches here. I wish I had the fuel pump handy, but it has this little piston here that pushes up and down on the arm on the fuel pump. So when you install the new fuel pump, you have to get that pin to go up and stay up out of the way so you can slide the arm in here. Yeah. And invariably, it's hard to get this to stay up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the trick is to put a little grease on it and push it up and then very quickly slide the fuel pump in. The other end is on the cam. Yeah, the camshaft's up here, and it pushes up and, and that's down. That's what's moving the pin. Okay. Yep. okay, yeah, cool. The fuel pump has this arm that uh, pushes up and down on the diaphragm to pump the fuel. 
on injected engines, it has to have a high pressure fuel pump. So when you install it, you know, here on the bench, it, it's real easy to slide it in there and get that arm to come up or the pin to come up. But in actuality on the aircraft, it's not quite so easy, but <laughs> that's the way it works. And then the, the camshaft lobe will push up and down on the, on the pin, pin to and push on the- uh, Cycles the arm. The arm, yeah. Okay. You see these, these bolts, they're fairly long and they gotta slide in these holes. Well, mm -hmm. the way this is designed, you almost have to go in at an angle to get them to slide in because the housing gets in the way. Uh, yeah, it sits in the way of the head. So the, I think the new pump actually is slightly um, elongated on this hole. Well, you can tell that one is too. Yeah. It's a little bit bigger. Okay, yeah. Why, why couldn't they make the flange a little wider? Yeah. Or just, no, just completely uh, different design. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. You look at this one, it's not not enlarged. But yeah, well, you're talking about a pain in the ass. Trying yeah, to get so that you're in. trying to get these in, you're trying to hold the pin up and get the pump in, yeah. you know. Plus, there is some pressure on this when the cam's on there, yeah, it doesn't go way. completely up out of the way. You got to rotate the engine around to the, the point where you can way. get it as high as possible, but it doesn't fully retract. Yeah. So. And then right. after it's on, you notice these have safety wire holes. So then you got a safety wire. In. Yeah. And th keep in mind that it's installed in the helicopter and there's about six inches of room between the firewall and the engine for yeah. you to work. Yeah, I'll do some video of it when you're reinstalling it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Poor mechanics. <laughs> Learn some new words. Yeah, mechanics are the last thought on the design of the engine in the helicopter. <laughs> so unfortunately, I was out flying with students all day and I didn't get a chance to uh, video Dean re uh, reinstalling the new fuel pump uh, onto the engine, which, which probably saved a lot of uh, profanity and recording profanity and swearing and crying. <laughs> So, needless to say, it's pretty tough to get the engine-driven fuel pump on, and uh, without uh, without saying a few choice words anyway. So, so that's it. So you know, you, you wouldn't think that a, an oil leak in the floor, you notice that, and you, you wouldn't automatically think, oh, it's my engine-driven fuel pump that that's gone bad. So, hope this was uh, helpful. And uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. The next video I think I'll do is one on fuel staining below the aircraft. And what are some of the different causes of fuel staining uh, on the R44. Um, and uh, so look for that next.